crossed your mind for prayer to remember Mother Maria Allen, Sister Beulah McLean, Brother Dwight, Ricky Walker, Sister Susie Harper, like that. Remember Mother Lily Meacher, Mother Willie Norm McCoy, Sister Kathy Williams, like to remember Mother Amelia Owens. We want to lift up the Hodges family to you, uh, Deacon Omega Troy Hodges, Deacon Larry Rigsby. We reach out to Deacon uh, Harley and Brenda White. We have not forgot uh, Brother Lee, Sister Versi Lee, and Sister Eula Mitchell. Uh, not forgetful right now in the name of Jesus that I have been that long that the day family has buried their son, their cousin, their, their brother. We're not forgotten about the Moses family uh, and the loss of Rayana. We still lift them up. We still remember. And so uh, we remember everything that's going on in this world today. And so as we uh, bow our heads, we continue to lift our eyes up into the hills from which comes our help. Eternal and all wise God, the creator of heaven and earth, the maker of every good and perfect gift, we step at this moment right now, Holy Ghost, First of all, to say thank you. Thank you. Well, somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For allowing us to see the clothing of another year. Yes. Thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to call upon your holy and your righteous name. Yes, Lord. Thankful, Lord, for how you continue to bless us over and over and over again. Thank you. And we haven't done a thing in the world to deserve it. Thankful, Lord, that you haven't forgotten us, even in the midst of our sin. How you remind us that we can't be forgiven. Declared in your word that though it be red as scarlet, that you will wipe them as white as snow. Lord God, we need you more right now than ever before. A lot going on down here. In our country this morning, over 350,000 lives ended at the hands of the core norovirus. But Lord God, we haven't forgotten about those who have passed uh, with heart disease, diabetes, DDT, respiratory ailments, car accidents, drive-by shootings, or those you have called home to be with you. Death has moved rapidly through our communities. But we trust, believe, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the call, according to his purpose. And so we declare right now, God, thy will be done. Yes. Lord, Lord, look down and have mercy on our nation right now because mercy suits our case. Yes, Continue to bless the leaders of our nation as they negotiate on the direction of our legislature. The people have spoken, Lord, by hope. God's will be done. Yes. Lord, please repair the breach of social equity between the races in this country so that we can really be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Nobody should have to say, please get your knee off my neck. Remember, oh Lord, those behind prison walls, those who on street corners today. We pray, my Father God, for those on our sick list today. Those in the hospitals, the rest homes. Yes. Those in sick rooms everywhere. Yes. Remind people that you are God who can do anything but faith. Yes. And so, Lord, as we go through the further exercises of the service, we ask that something might be said, heard, sung, prayed, put in the spirit. Yes, Lord. That will have somebody to ask that age-old question. What must I do to be saved? Dear God, bless those who are counted to be within the sound of my weak voice. Thank you for our videographers, our you, musicians, the songstress. We thank you for the trustees in the back. We realize, oh God, that only the things we do for God yes. 
Yes. We'll ask. And so we ask these in Jesus' name. And for our sake we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, folks, just to sing this song. They will say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the whole church was singing hallelujah. Jesus, this blood 
that flows from Emmanuel's vein is replicated by this new covenant wine that, it, that emblematically represents the, the blood of Jesus. Dear God, transform them. Allow them to build up our spiritual bodies that one day we'll get a new body like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty work and whereby he is able to subdue all pain. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 He took the bread, he broke it, and he ate it. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, and he drank it. He said, Drink ye all, meaning every one of it, and they drank together. Let the church say amen. Amen. We're going to try. Somebody said, We're going to try. We're going to try. Sing a little of this song. I thought I had the words, but I don't, so might be a remix, might be a remix, but nobody told me.
honor brothers and sisters clergy in the building throughout the community. We realize, God, that just to be in your presence, the old folk used to say one more game, is something special because it could have been the other way. Sister Merrill's read the scripture. How many books in the Bible? What's the last book? Revelation. And the last word? Amen. Amen. Revelation 21, 1 through 8. You know, he, he talked about how when things really get down to the nitty gritty, he going to wipe away all tears. Isn't that all right? Yes. But the part I like found in verse 5. He, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And just for a little while, uh, Brother Brian, I uh, want to talk from the subject of a new me for a new year. Amen. A new me. For a new year, Father, and your mercy you have forgiven us, and your love you saved us, and your patience you taught us. Help us this morning to be taught once more by a gift of your precious Holy Ghost, that we may love you more, follow you better, please you in every way. Dear God, it's preaching time, but before we can have preaching, you must send the preacher. I ask Father for that anointing that makes preaching easy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Somebody say amen. 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 A new me for a new year. About this time of the year, we all have the audacity to think of all the things that we should have done last year, but we didn't do. You know, we got all these different ways that we're going to change ourselves to make us do again. I've been losing the same 75 pounds for I know 50 years. And every year I come up with a new plan. And in about three weeks into the plan, I'm right back to the same old, same old. I ain't by myself. Amen. Come on now. But, but there comes a time when, when your spiritual condition needs to be changed. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of things, people think that we can do this change all by ourselves. And then we get caught up with the call. But I'm here to tell you today that if you want a new me for a new year, that it has to begin with Jesus. You see, Jesus makes all things new. Uh, the seventh chapter of Luke records the, the story of a woman who crashes a party at Simon's house. And y'all know how parties are. Simon was a Pharisee. He was a, a man of great respect in his community. He had invited Jesus to be his guest for dinner. Y'all know that if y'all was having a party and y'all invited Donald Trump, y'all want the party to be special. Right. No. Somebody said right. Okay. No. But in the middle of this party that he had for his highly distinguished guests, A woman burst in. She was not on the guest list. Uh, she was a party crasher. In fact, uh, she was a woman who would have never been welcome in the Simon's house. Uh, she was a woman of the streets. A prostitute. What brought her to Simon's house? Perhaps she had heard about Jesus or witnessed one of his miracles. Maybe she had overheard one of his powerful sermons. Perhaps you only heard about Jesus through the reports of others. You know how you, you hear things and you want to check things out for yourself. Nevertheless, the text tells her that she came into the room where Simon and his guests were eating and she immediately, somebody say immediately. Immediately. 
fell at Jesus' feet. Her eyes were filled with tears. She was weeping. Her tears were for herself. The implication of the text uh, is clear. She had become convicted of her sins and had sought out Jesus. Have you ever done something so wrong that you fell down on your knees and you said, Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, if I had only not done what I had done. And, and, and you see, her life had been a waste. And, and we don't know the full circumstances that lead, that led her to the life she was living. But it's not hard to imagine. Perhaps it was poverty uh, that, that led her to sell herself, that satisfied the walk and pleasures of others. Perhaps it was abandonment of her by others that led her to choose this shameful way of life. Uh, perhaps it was her own skewed sense of morality or, or a total lack of regard for what was right and proper. Whatever the case, she had come to a breaking point. To a point where she realized that her life was empty. Her actions were immoral. She needed a new beginning. She needed absolution. She needed Jesus. And so she came to weep at Jesus' feet. And, and, and the others gathered in Simon's home, they were aghast at her presence, offended and even angry that she had interrupted their meeting. Simon was ready to leap to his feet, throw the woman back into the streets. But Jesus was different. Jesus could see the tears in her eyes, feel the sadness in her heart. He knew the genuineness of her response, and he was compassionate. And to the surprise of Simon and the other guests in the home, Jesus said, Simon, did you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not know, anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that Jesus took this woman's old condition, her old status, and made it new and Throughout the gospel, we find the renewal that Jesus brings to people. We find in Jesus one who takes what is old, what is discarded, what is useless, and transforms these things into people who are new, treasured, and worthy. Jesus will take me and make me a new me for a new year. And from the beginning, this is the picture of God that comes repeatedly in the view. At the opening verse of the scripture, it describes God taking something that was formless and void and filled with darkness and creating a universe that is beautiful, whole, and filled with wondrous light. In the end of this story, God took a people who were battered, enslaved, and without identity and fault and made them into a nation that is free, numerous, and its own. For with God, all things are made new. And so we find ourselves this morning in the final book of Revelation. The Lamb of God, Jesus said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, uh, point 5, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for all the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words that you are faithful. And because of that, and because of that, I can relate to that woman in Simon's house this morning. And, and I don't know about you, Rodney, but I've been in a point where I have been convicted by my sins, ashamed of the things I used to do. And I'm glad this morning, yeah, that Jesus has called me to, 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 to a new course in my life. Ain't you glad this morning yeah. that Jesus can make all things new, yeah. that he can take your past, whatever it is, and replace it with a new outlook, a new course, a new promise. I, 
I believe Jesus was who he said he was. I believe Jesus was who he said he was. And he proved it by rising from the dead. I repent of my sins and I accept you as Lord. Savior and leader of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And for forgiving all my sins. And right now, Holy Ghost, I receive your gift of eternal life. I want to discover and begin following. Your land, plan and purpose for my life. And to know you more and more personally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, we believe that you're saved. We ask that you get in a good Bible-based church and ask God to lead and guide you from this moment forward in all that you do. Put God first. When you've done all you know, Eternal God, we thank you right now in Jesus' name for everything that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our heart has felt. We thank you, Father, for the fellowship of kindred spirits. We thank you for our mindset that says that as I get ready to walk out of the store, that I can't even walk without you holding my hand. God, I thank you that in 2001 I have an opportunity, a new me, for a new year. And as you think of anyone who is not saved, I, I want you to pray for them this morning to remember this. They will not sink, they must be sunk. They will not come, they must be fall. They will not learn, they must be taught. If every soul will win one soul, and every soul will be saved. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And for his sake we pray. Let the church say amen.